I'm going to say yes. No, no, you're good. This is like the only place I go masked with. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm masking up today because I've been around a lot of people. So I'm masking up just to keep everybody safer. I know. So my face is all itchy and all kind of, ugh. I know, and I can't breathe. My nose drips because I'm breathing in my own hot air all the time. Mm-hmm. I know, but when, when you're around a lot of people, yeah, I went to um, I went to a funeral, and actually, Stefan, that's r I don't like that. If you could have it so I can't see it, that's very distracting. All right. Um, because there's all kinds of stuff on there, and I I find it very distracting. Um, yeah, so I went to a funeral of a good friend on Monday, and there was all kinds of people there, and. There was a lady who came, and she was, um, I had helped her with a wedding gown of her daughter. So she just came up to me, and she just hugged me so tight. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for helping me. And I'm just sitting there going, oh, okay, um, yes, we're both vaccinated, but we're unmasked. And so, you know, I'm just going, you know, I just don't know. So I'm going, I'll just wear a mask, keep everybody safe. I've been feeling fine. No fevers. Of course, my drippy nose is probably due to all my allergies, so you don't know, right? But then again, our immune systems, it's been a long time since I've been sick. My immune system doesn't know what it's doing. What's worrisome is the children are getting RSV winding up in the hospital with it, which is insane. Oh, I know, but all of us, right? All of our children got RSV, and it was no big deal. And now all of a sudden, they're winding up in the ICU. It's insane. So I don't know. We're keeping ourselves safe from everything, and our poor bodies can't handle any little diseases anymore. Yeah, we drink out of water and eat dirt, so I know. We can't do that anymore. I still yeah. drink out of hoses. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with a hose. My parents were eating these now, and they only had right. one child. <laughs> we all seem to survive. I had no helmet when I rode my bike. I've never worn a helmet in my life. No helmet has ever been on my head. There you go. There you go. So anyway, so today, and our numbers are still really low. I don't know if people are just losing. Do you guys like Club? Love Club. I'm beginning to wonder, you know, do I continue this or is there a lack of interest? I don't know. Anyway, oh, good. So I'll keep doing it if you love it, but try to build numbers. COVID kind of knocked some things out of us, but we're going to go. So there are new classes um, that I'm trying to offer up a more, you know, rather than just the beginning classes, some other classes. So some of the surger class, surger slash cover stitch classes I have coming up, there's a surger class that is for the feet for your surger. Because a lot of times people go, well, this is great, but I have this foot, and how do I use it, and when do I use it, and this foot, and this foot. So it's just going to be about the feet. So you need to know how to use your serger, and I'm just going to go over all the feet. Then I'm going to have another one that's just all the attachments for the cover stitch. How do I use my binders? How do I use, you know, so it's going to be about that. I'm also, for those of you that have the IQ designer, I'm going to, you can see out there, I have a sample of my Bluebird Trapunto that I designed in the IQ Designer. So we'll do a little um, wall hanging for that. And then just some other classes. I do have leggings today and on Tuesday I have a leggings class. So we'll be doing that. And I'm just thinking, and if there's a class you guys want, I, pr I really, I really want to do more high-end classes, shall I say, you know, so really would love to do more technical things like with IQ designers and embroidery and stuff like that. Um, I have some other ladies who are starting to do the beginning classes, so now I want to focus on doing more technical things. For those of you that have the machines that can do all kinds of crazy stuff that you might not know how to do it very well, I want to teach you guys how to use that, so, so just let me know. Um, there are some new machines coming in. I think we only have the one new machine called the Chorus. It's taking the place of the Crescendo. Um, some of the, it looks the same. I haven't noticed. I don't know what else is going on in there. I don't know if they really changed the firmware up a whole lot. But it, it looks, you know, it's about this, it's the same footprint. But what they, it does come with, it has, you can take the cover off. 
I always feel like I'm breaking it though. You can take the cover off and then it has a stand that you know you used to buy separately, it now comes with, so the spool stand that goes in the back. It also comes with that dual function foot, you know, that I really like that, you know, a lot of us purchased now comes with. So we have that. Um, the other new machines that are coming in, another one is going to be the Aria replacement. And I don't know about the other ones. I mean, I barely got these names down, and now they're changing all the names. I mean, but they're still staying with the music theme, right? We have Aria now in Crescendo. Now we're going to have Chorus. I don't know what the you know, orchestra. I don't know. Anyway, so those are those are happening. Um, another thing, too, just so... Solaris um, there was an update just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so it was just an update. I don't know. I know it said that it was going to make it so it's quieter when it uses the digital dual feed. And I don't know what else they changed them, but that's all they said. But you know, they usually do some other things that you just don't know about. So yeah, so that was just an, that's an up date. Mine, mine did it automatically. You know, it was nice. I went down, I turned the machine on, it had the little exclamation point. I'm going, oh! So it just says, turn off your machine, turn it on again, pushing, you know, your threader. And then it just automatically updated for me. So it's nice when you have it hooked up to your Wi-Fi, then I don't have to worry about it. So anyway, um, so they did that. Out front, they have some new chairs, if you saw the cute little chairs. And they, they, you can get one with cats on it. Then there's one with the sewing on it. Then there's the plain boring ones that, you know, some people like plain boring. I always like funky stuff. I guess there's a steampunk one, too. So they're having all kinds of fun stuff with that. Another new foot that they have is a clear quarter-inch foot. Sometimes the clear quarter inch feet are really nice because, you know, as you're coming up, you can really see through it to see when you're at that quarter inch mark. So they have the clear quarter, and what's nice is it's only $15.99. You know, it's not going to break the bank. So we don't we love the most of the sewing machine feet are below $16, you know, which is really nice. And so we have that, and this one actually is for sale. You want that one? You want that one? <laughs> I think we may have one. I put another one on order because I bought one of them too. We got three of them. We got four of them in. One was already sold. I took one. One may still be up there. Yeah, they, but I can order more. That's not a problem. Uh, have a guide with it no, this one does not have a guide with it. It's just a clear foot right now. But it, it's it's just yeah. <laughs> as Trust. you'll you'll get the little yeah. the case back and you'll go there's nothing in it right, right. it's clear that's why you can't see it because it's clear <laughs> that's right no but you know clear feet are nice because it is sometimes I just like that view the metal ones will hold you know kind of sit a little bit heavier but the clear ones are still nice because then we can see and I love to be able to see uh huh. I feel like it, it moves, and I don't really get the true. The true quarter inch because you're pushing too hard against it, and so it's wiggling and wiggling. So try it, yeah, and see because then you can really see your fabric. All righty, so I'm going to talk about now. This was called KitchenAid, so I did everything to do with the kitchen, and try some things I've shown before. Some things are new, so and some things I just said I'm out of time, and I'm just going to show you the pattern. Say here, um, so. One of the things, and this was just um, when I when I got the pattern, I laughed. And this is called the Betty Bowl Bonnets. And it's just a little pattern. And you just, you know, you cut a circle. But what I did do with this is I went and I used the Heaton. Actually, I used the Odif brand of it. But the Heaton Bond is basically the same stuff. It's a liquid vinyl. And I just used this with my Teflon pressing sheet. And I just painted it on the fabric. And so it's waterproof. And I made sure that this is non-toxic, OK? So I went and I did that. And I, I should have done both sides. I only did one side. I think I would do it again, let one side dry, flip it over, and do the other side, and let it dry for about 24 hours. And so now it's waterproof. You know, this is the same thing you could do for your purses or a raincoat or whatever. So the heat and bond, and it is non-toxic. So you can use that. I wouldn't put it in the microwave, but you know, it's a bulb on it. And it's just, you just cut out your circle, then you put your fold over elastic. Now with mine, I didn't pull the elastic tight enough. 
So this is what you get. It looks like a shower cap. This is what you get when you don't pull the elastic tight enough. You want to pull the elastic tighter as you're sewing it along. And of course, you know, just using any of your fold over tapes. I, you know, I, I bought all these different fold over elastics, right? Now I got to use them up. So I was pulling like this, pull like this, really pull it and bring it in. And she just t shows, tells you, okay, you know, measure whatever you want it to go over. And this is, this is how you figure it out. Of course, now you have to cut out a circle. So why wouldn't I have you going to look at that? that? Like I said, I would probably do it twice. So why wouldn't I have a cool circle cutter? This is actually really fun. And I, I saw it a while ago. And so when I saw this Betty's bonnets, I went, oh, I can cut out a circle. Because I do have some circle templates and stuff like that. You know, but usually it's just to draw the circle and I still have to cut it out. So why wouldn't I have a rotary cutter with a little rotary cutter blade with this? So you go and you put it, you know, of course, this is your radius, not your diameter. So we're going back to geometry. If you need a 10 inch circle, this is two and a half, right? So you put it whatever radius you need it. It does have a little pokey thing, so it could stick in there nice and tight. You do release the blade, and then you just sit there, and I'm going to keep everything close, and you just put it on there and you just go whoop all the way around, and I get a perfect circle. It's pretty fun. And, of course, it's the regular Ulfa blade that you can put, you know, so you can put any old, your, that's an 18 millimeter blade, so the little tiny blades in there. But, yeah, and these two things move, so you can sit there and hold on to it and move it around. You don't have to worry about it. Like I said, it has a little pokey thing in there. And so, cool little gadget. Because, of course, I'd have a cool little gadget and try and figure out how to put it back in here, get it the right place. But I did. I saw, you know, I've had it sitting on my, my cutting table is never used for cutting. It has all my next projects on it. And this was been sitting there, so I went, I need to do this. So this is our Nifty Notions Rotary Compass Cutter. So if you like to cut out circles, you can cut out circles. Oh, you, okay, you can pass that around. Um, another thing that I did not, I, I think I still need to make it because I keep my mixer, my mixer's in my pantry. But this is a really nice pattern using the, you know, the foam and everything for your mixer. And it has different sizes, so you could make them. Um, of course, I was looking at it going, maybe I can make a cover for my serger. I'd have to change it up a little too much. But it has pockets. It has mesh pockets. It has other pockets that you can stick all your little, you know, your hook and your, or your paddles and everything in there, and you can just keep all your stuff together. Mine, everything gets put in the bowl, it gets put in my pantry, and then, and there it goes. And it gets full of who knows what all. So anyway, but I know, some of these patterns, I do have some that are, are on sale that you don't have to order. So I have one of everything. We had a little issue with one of our, or, or some of our orders with Brewer. Anyway, so we have the in the mix. So this is a really just a really nice pattern. It is a by Annie's, and her directions are usually pretty good. And of course, she's using the fold over elastic in the mesh, which we've used a bunch of times. You guys probably have a lot of it left. It's like, what am I going to do with it? Oh, well, guess what? You can make pockets to go on the outside of your mixer cover, so you can go and do that. So that can cover up your little mixer, or your big mixer. Um, and then. The, these guys, I laugh. These are the, remember I did these a while ago? And so they were just fun. It, it's on there. Um, this one, I laugh because this is, I have made three of these now. It sits so far down, I have a large, like, fry pan. And I usually leave this on the handle. But it goes so far down, it has a tendency to get burned because that pan gets so hot. Okay, you should see my other one. My, my son-in-law was cooking up some food on it, and we had a little bit of a grease fire, and so that one was totally fried. It just, it just the whole thing was gone. So I made this one. This lasted, I think, a week. And so I'm like going, oh, great. So I made another one, and what I did with it, because my handle 
if it goes any farther than this, then it's too close. It sits too far down and it, to where it gets really hot. So I actually hand tacked it here so it only goes this far in. Instead of making it shorter, I didn't want to make one this short. I thought that looked kind of silly. So I, want, I still wanted it so I could still grab it, <coughs> but I tacked it so I can't push it all the way on. But anyway, um, if you guys didn't use this before, and it used that insulated batting, and so this is the handles for your, like your fry pans and stuff, and of course you have your oven mitts. They're all done in the hoop. So these are all in the hoop designs. And they're just fun. You know, you can make quick little gifts, or you can keep making them over and over again because you keep burning them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works out really well for me too. Okay, we have that. Um, then, of course, just because gnomes are so cute, we have... Oh, this is a, these are in the hoop little gnome coasters, a little boy and a little girl. And of course, you know what's fun is you can make them any color to match your kitchen. Mine is, you can see I have a lot of lime green. So, you know, you can make your little coasters. And they're really fast, they're cute, they're, you know, you can make them for gifts and things like that. So these are the little, the little gnomes. And I do have one of those over there if you want one of those. Um, and that one, I think I used just regular batting on those. I can't remember. Just something to, you know, keep it for, to soak up the moisture on the. Well, but it's in the hoop. So you just stick it in there, and you just sew them up, and then you just turn it. So I have a lot of in the hoop stuff this time around because it's just, it's easy for me to push a button. Think. And here's. Now, here's a gnome coaster. I mean, trivet. So here's a gnome trivet. So the gnome trivet, and these are also really fast. And believe it or not, there's two layers of that insulated batting in here. But when you go and you quilt it, it mushes down. I was really surprised. I'm going, okay, it's really thick. And then after it's done, so I'm like, oh, okay, but there's two layers in there. Like yeah, the insulbrite stuff, there's actually two layers in there, and it just kind of crunched it all down. So, you know, you could put another layer in if you wanted to, too. But these are just uh, cute little gnomes. Once again, you know, it's a type of applique. She has, this is, these are pickle pie designs. Now, just as a warning for you, um, any designs that you get, if you get the CDs, open them right away and make sure that they are there, okay? Because what happened with mine is, uh, when I got mine, this one, and anybody can take this if they want to because it's a corrupted CD. I couldn't read any of the files. It told me that, first it told me I couldn't, it, I didn't have enough memory to copy them. I'm going, um, how big are these files? I've got gigabits, you know. And then I, I tried pulling it into one of my um, programs and it shows one point right in the middle. I'm going, okay, something's going on here. So I, and, you know, Pickle Pie, like I said, I really like them because I emailed them and said, hey, this is what happened. I gave them all the information. I said, do you want me to mail it back to you to prove that I bought it? What do you want? And you know what she does? She just sends me, she just sent it to me. She goes, here it is. Sorry about that. I'm like, oh, okay. So anyway, just make sure you open it up and make sure that you don't have corrupted files. I know that years ago I bought an Anita Good Design design. And I just did, you know, I opened it up, you know, I just, transferred all of this stuff onto my computer. I didn't even look at it. Well, it was probably five years later when I said, oh, I, I have a pattern for this. I want to do this design. I opened it up. I'm going, why did I put the wrong files in this one? It was supposed to be a beach scene, and I had something else in there. I'm going, this doesn't make sense. So I got the CD out, put it back in. They had it mislabeled. But there's nothing I can do now. It's too many years. So make sure you check them out. If there's a problem, we can fix it right away. So anyway. Here's the little gnome trivet, because, you know, gnomes are so big these days. Oh, for those of you that don't have embroidery machines but you still like gnomes, this is, the, you know, and for those of you that do have, you know, if you want to, you, of course, you could probably digitize it yourself. This is sewing only. So these are all these cute little gnomes. For those of you that like all the silly little gnomes, you can pass that around. So you can do that. <coughs> You know, and some of these things, too, what you could do with some of them is, you know, you could do it other than making them. You could just do the applique of, of them on other things. You could do that. Um, let's see. I was going to say, what else? 
What are going to tell you? Handle huggers. So I have a question. That's oh, over yeah. two layers. Is it, is it so the shiny side, like you can turn it over? She didn't, it she didn't say, so I did them opposite yeah. just so because. Now yeah, exactly. That's what I did. You know, because I'm going, she didn't say, they just said put two layers in. So I'm going, okay. Yeah. So I put them so they're facing out, the shiny side out. And just for fun. But I thought, you know, the, I, isn't that interesting how flat it is? Flat. It is so flat after putting two layers in. So, of course, don't, don't throw that in the, the microwave. So one of the other things I did is called handle huggers. I don't know about you, my husband, you know, there's only, there's only two of us in the house, and I'm wiping down those handles all the time. It's like, what? what? I, I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, there's, these are handle huggers, and they come in different sizes. So, you know, if you have a smaller and a longer, two long ones. Mine I did plain. I didn't put the the fork and the spoon on there, but the fork and the spoon, you could also, you know, you could just do those by themselves, so you could make placemats or all kinds of fun things. And then I just used the cam snaps, you know, and of course, it's so simple. I mean, it's in the, it's an in the hoop design, you know, so it's super simple. You just put it, you, know, you put it in there, it does the quilting, you put the other side, you take it out, you turn it inside out, you fuse it closed, and you're done. But I use the cam snaps, and along with the cam snaps, and for the fun things that we have, some of you may remember these, the Simflex from way back in the day. You know, I, I remember a lady, she bought one, and then she came in and she bought another one. I said, but you just bought one. She goes, I know my husband took it <laughs> because he uses it for his woodworking. That makes sense. Right? And so he used it for his woodworking so he knew where to place whatever, he, you know, his nails or whatever. But anything, you know, this, of course, was meant for buttonholes. But I used it for my snaps. I always have to remember, I have this. I don't have to sit there and say, okay, it's 15 inches, and I want to put so many snaps on there, and then i got to divide it up, and then it's 2 and 1, 2.13, you know. I just go, do 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 boom, mark, 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 and I'm done. No math. You know, so I love these, these Simflex or Flexible, whatever they're called now. They, everybody has a different name for them. The first time I tried finding these, I... Expanding sewing gauge is what this one's calling. I know mine's called a Simflex. I know because I remember when I first, I kept going, um, sewing gauges, um, buttonhole markers. You know, you try and think of all the names they could go by. You're like, okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you could cut circles with that on your fondant. <laughs> But anyway, this is another, you know, in the hoop thing, but oh, that little snap came off. I, oh, I did not push these snaps on tight enough, obviously. I need to fix those. And so you have your little snaps on there. So you can take it off, wash it, put it back on instead of wiping down every single solitary day. I am surprised. These camps, it must be that it's a little bit too thick. I use the th thinner cam snaps. I need to go and push them in a little bit harder, obviously. Because, you know, have you ever used cam snaps? It mushes down the inside. It obviously didn't mush them down enough. Okay, have to redo those. But anyway, super simple. No big deal. You know, like I did, I did a lot of very simple things this time, just like. But fun things that you can make your kitchen all coordinated. Um, yeah, because I was thinking too, you know, the, like the fork and spoon, besides placemats, you can put them on towels, you can do all kinds of things. You know, I always try and think of what could I do for quick wedding gifts or something like that. <clears throat> you can do that. Okay, and then of course we have the microwave bowl buddies. And this is another pickle, I, I realize that they're all pickle pie designs. And she has another one, it's another in the hoop, so everything has to be 100% cotton. You know, anything that goes in the microwave, everything has to be 100% cotton. The thread, the batting, the fabric, everything. No polyester. So make sure that you're batting, because I know a lot of us use the 80-20 batting. It has to be 100% cotton. Okay, those that are like 98%, 2% scree, that's okay. That's still considered 100% cotton. And then all you do is, after you make it, it looks, it's a shape like, you know, it goes like this. It looks kind of like a cross. And then you just fold it up. 
and you just and you can either sew it with your sewing machine or hand tack it. I hand tacked it because they say you know the opening you can hand tack the opening closed or you can just sew around it so you put your bowl in it so you fit it to whatever size bowl you need it to be for. And so I have some big bowls so I made it for that. But it's nice to have something in one of those bowls and then you take it out and you don't burn yourself. So these are the bowl buddies. And you could actually have embroidery on them like hot stuff and other things that they bon appetit hot stuff warm it up and then nothing and i do the nothing a lot of times so we have our little bowl buddies okay it does it comes in different sizes it has extra small might be really small small medium large and extra large i think that one was an extra large the extra large needs the 10 and a half by 10 and a half inch hoop and the large is nine and a half by nine and a half medium is basically eight by eight and then six by six and five by five so they do have the different sizes and it is nice because it is quilted actually i think i did mine they have the quilted on the inside it should be like this i'm doing it the wrong way it doesn't look very deep yeah I put it I put it the wrong way. That's what happens when you sew it and you just throw it aside. There we go. That looks a little better. I should have done it opposite so I could have had the colorful one on the outside. So that's that's the bowl buddy. I can see that did look kind of funny. It's like one. I know I kept thinking, how did my bowl fit in that? It goes this way. There we go. It's been a long week. So we have that. I was looking at it going, oh yeah, the quilted goes on the inside. Anyway, so that's the bowl buddies. Um, so you could do that. Uh, now these are the ones that I showed last time. Remember these, these, these fruit stand hot pads, the the Kimberbell ones. I don't know. If some of you may have seen these in chenille. So I thought, well, these have to do with the kitchen too. And what's fun about these is, you know, there's no reason why you can't just do this part. You could do an applique on a towel or something. You know, you know how to skip through and say, I don't need this and this and this. I just want that part. Or you could take it, you know, if you have software, you could take it in, put it in there and do that. I still like the pineapple. So anyway, but they have the chenille hot pads with the insulation in them. And once again, these are in the hoop design. And they have all of that. These are not, for a Kimberbell, they're not bad. Not too many jumps and cuts. Um, so we have those. And then we have bowl, another bowl bonnet in the hoop bowl bonnet. And this, this is actually the large size. I was laughing. It's like, going, this is the large. Um, what's nice about this one, though, is instead of using that elastic, they actually, she actually uses regular elastic and she makes a casing in the hoop. Now she does have directions to sew, so you could just do the applique and then how to make it bigger if you have a big bowl. So you could do your big bowl and then um, how to do your casings and everything because she just does the casings, which is interesting because there is a casing in there, but you don't see it on the outside. So it's kind of tricky. But you just have that one little spot where you where you pull it through, and then you just put your elastic in. Now I have this. This is one of the the bodkin that is on there. I don't know if any of you have this kind. There's this one, and then there's another one that it kind of grabs it, and so it comes in a pair. But I like this one. I have so many different ways to string things. Because these are so, this is so small, I couldn't use that long one that I like to use when I put things through waistbands. I couldn't do that one. But this is fine because this one just, you know, it's so small and you can see it's already bent because of how I use it. But it's just another one of those putting it through rather than a safety pin. You know, safety pins are okay, but I have, I think I have five or six different types of threaders. And depending on what I'm doing, I use different threaders. I always get them out, nope, too wide, nope, too, you know, because this has to be small enough. It's an eighth of an inch elastic in here. This one's too small. This one's too fat. This one's too long. This one's too, oh, here's the one, you know. My husband wonders why I have tackle boxes full of stuff. So that's an in the hoop. And then I did one of the other ones. I said, oh, I have all these towels. I, instead of doing the whole, you know, instead of making a bowl buddy, I just use the applique and just stuck it on a towel. So, you know, 
you got to look at some of the software saying, oh, I can do more than just that one thing with it. Um, let's see. Oh, the other thing, too, is, you know, what you could also do is you could, I did not put that vinyl stuff on here, but you could do the vinyl stuff on both sides or maybe just the inside and make it so it's more waterproof and then you could wash it off or, or just leave it like this and throw it in the washer and, and keep it covered up and do that. So you could have for every single, and they have, oh, where is my, oh, they have a apple, a pear, and the cherries, and I like Bosque pear, so I made mine a green, a greenish pear, and not a yellow pear. So I did that. Okay. Any questions about these? And of course, if you do a bigger one after you do your embroidery, you could use your cool compass cutter to cut it out. You know. I right, have to remember to use our tools. Okay. Now we're going to do just some sewing stuff. Like I said, I. Even though I did a lot of stuff, it's easy to talk about. Um, so these are some fun things, and they're they're called. These are also called hot stuff. So be careful. The hot stuff, um, everyday mitt. I try to make sure that you. I said that silicone only. The hot stuff. Um, where is it? The hot stuff oven mitts in the hoop embroidery are these. Okay, so it's way down here. All this other stuff is all of what I'm going to talk about now. Okay, so make sure, that's why I try to put down embroidery CD software so you know that it's a different different thing. So I was going to talk about the um, all of our hot stuff. Now they, there are, this is the hot stuff everyday mitt. This is the size of it, so it's a little bit shorter. This is a silicone overlay now it comes in you can get the clear you can get what do they call it do they call it I think they call this the green mm -hmm. and then they have a red that's a real red that you can do so you can get it any of the colors if you don't like the green or the red you could just get the clear and then when you put your own fabric on the inside then it's you know it's whatever color you want it to be so this is what it looks like. It is just, yes, yeah, so it's already shaped. And all you do is you're just going to sew on it. And believe it or not, you can sew through it without any prom at all. And it has a lip, and you line it up with the lip, and you sew with your, I sewed with my um, zipper foot so I could get up close to it. And you actually just sew right through it. But, you know, it's, it's kind of like leather or vinyl. Once you sew it, it's sewn. So take your time, you know, when you do it. But it does come in these different colors. Now, the one, so I bought one that had the pattern. Oh, that's just, so you buy one that has the pattern, and then you can buy refills. So actually, they do show you the colors. So they have the colors on there. And... So you can, and this one I did mine the same. They do theirs different colors. Go ahead and pass this around so you can look and see the different things they do. But um, so buy the, you have to buy one with the pattern in it. And then the other than that, then you can start buying the refill. So if I want five of them, I don't have to buy five of the Hot Stuff Everyday Mitt pattern in silicone. I just have to buy one of those and then just the refills which, you know, are down here, all the refills. So make sure you just buy the refills. And so you can buy whatever colors what, you want. What's the difference between the hot stuff everyday mitt and hot stuff oven mitt? Oh. Ah. Oh. It, this is longer, okay? So this is the everyday mitt, okay? And this comes in the three different colors, okay? And then you just put it on there. And what I did on this one is you make the mitt, and you can see I have... The pattern, I drew out the pattern for it. I have both of them here. I have the oven and the everyday. Because you're going to have your pattern. So you have this when you cut this out, and then you have this part that goes down here. actually goes this way, down here, and then you bind the edge. So what I did 
is they have you, if you look at the directions on this, I was going to say hot stuff. Where's my direct? So my directions must be in here. So you see what you're getting into. Because it's not bad. It's not hard at all. Just make sure you keep all your pattern pieces because they give you the pattern pieces. Ta-da! But I like to draw mine out. I don't like to cut up my... Sometimes I do if I'm lazy, but usually I draw them out. And so this one is... Oh, this is the hot stuff. Oh, I put them all together. Oh, no, this is the everyday mitt. So they have... Um, that. This is the lining. This is the insert. So make sure you keep your... Right. So you have... This one and this one go together. And then if you look at the inside, the inside is the lining piece, and that's the long one is the lining piece. I have all kinds. And so this is the lining that goes on the inside. And they do have you quilt it. So they show you and make sure that you mirror, right? Otherwise you have two right sides. Mirror them, and they show you how to quilt it. Now you can quilt it. Or you can be lazy like me and stick it in your machine, find a fill you like, and say, do it. And so that's what I did with mine. You don't have to do it that way, but I wanted to make sure you guys could, you know, know how to use all your stuff. You don't have to follow along and say, oh, now I'm going to go and quilt it. No, what I did is because I have circles, I used the circle one. And all I did is I put my fabric with the batting and everything. I made the sandwich. I put it in my hoop and I put it in there. And all I did is I just, I put my pattern pieces on there. So I just had my two pattern pieces on there like this. And I scanned it in so I knew the size. I did it in IQ Designer. So I knew the size that I needed it. Then I made the frame and then I just filled in where I wanted it. Quilted the whole thing so it would be similar to what you would do here, right? They have you quilt a big piece of fabric, you quilt it, and then you cut it out afterwards. So I just had it done in the hoop. So either way, works the same. So you quilt it up, you cut it out, and then you sew it. And they have good directions on how to sew it. You know, they talk about your quilting of it. You can see all their pretty, all their, all their ways of doing it. So they, they talk about the quilting of it. They do have photographs saying, wait, check this first, you know, and because they have what they call reality checks. So they're going, okay. They obviously made some mistakes. And they had, so they had the reality check. They talk about how to do things, you know, how to trim them, how to cut them. So it's very, you know, good directions and show you how to do stuff. How you bind it, they do show you how to bind it. They have a strip and they say, you know, sew it together and do that. This one I did how we do quilts. I made mine a little bit bigger and I sewed it down and then I, because they have you, you know, making your binding piece like normal, folding it over and then sewing it down. I did mine, I sewed it like I do my binding and my quilt and I actually didn't sew it together, I just overlapped it, folded it and overlapped it like I would do a quilt. So you could do that. And so you can make this any size you want. You know, that's why we like stuff like this. We can do it whatever, however you want to. You could use it the same fabric, so you can't even see it. You could do it like this. I wanted you guys to be able to see this. One thing that I, <clears throat> that I would do, I'm, I'm going to make another one. The green one won't matter, but this one, you can see I have a little, I thought I shoved it up in there enough, and when I sewed along it, it kind of shifted a little bit. Because you can't use pins, so I was using clips, and clips can hold, but you still have to take them off sooner than with pins. I can leave them in longer, but I couldn't. So what I would do with this one is I decided that when I make that little inside part, this one that goes in there, I'm going to make it probably about a quarter inch longer. That will give me more length to play with because they have you, the way they have you lining it up, it kind of shifted out. So if I gave myself a little bit more room, it would hang. It would hang out more, and I would be able to hand, you know, be able to handle it better. It was just so such a narrow little spot that I needed. I'm going. If I gave myself just a little bit extra, it's no big deal. This one you'd never notice 
if I'm off a little bit because it's this way. But this one, you know, you can see I'm just off a little bit. So shove it up in there more. I was going to give myself a little bit more on the bottom. That way I could shove it up, have a little bit more seam allowance. I can trim it off if I want to or leave it in there. Who's going to know? And But that would still work out just fine. So this is the Hot Stuff Everyday Mitt. What do you like better? Using. You know, I haven't used these yet because I didn't want to mess them up before the club. Um, this one, so this is, ba you know, it's a little bit different. I have pieces now everywhere. I better put my piece, at least I label my pieces so I know what they are, which is a good thing. Um, it really isn't. I mean, it, it, I didn't think it was. You know, because I just, especially when I had it doing its own quilting, you know, I pushed the button, had it do that. Because all you're doing is you're cutting out, sewing around it, then you shove it up inside here, sew around the bottom, sew the band on, sew the binding on. I mean, you're, it's maybe a couple hours, if that. I mean, it's pretty fast. And if you, and after you've done a few of them, you're like, oh, yeah, then you know what you're doing. So I didn't think they were very time consuming at all. Did that? Oh, the hot stuff everyday knit. That would be really pretty, wouldn't it? So with this one, this only comes in the clear, and it does have. Oh yeah, I have formula. So you notice that this one, the this down here is a little bit different shaped. So they do have your you know, quilting template and everything like that. You're going to do your quilting. And once again, I just stuck mine in and I quilted it in the in my hoop. You don't have to. But this one I did like the because I use this, I use this it looks like the chicken wire. So I use that one because I can. This one I made sure I shoved it up in there really tight and I and I clipped it really well to make sure that it didn't come down. But I went and did this. If you you know do directional, make sure you know which direction everybody's going in. And once again, this one I did like they more like they told me to. I measured however long they told me to measure it. I sewed it. I pressed it. So I do have a seam right there. Of course, you know they didn't do a mitered seam. That's you know this one is just there. So you get a little bit of a lump there. But I did it this um, kind of their way where they have you sew it on this way and pull it to the inside. The other one I did, how I usually do my binding, where I sew it on the inside and pull it to the outside. But it's not bad. I did, I did okay. Because then I sewed right along the edge there, but I really had to make sure that I was going to catch it all the way around. So you can do either way. This one is a little bit longer. So I think they're called oven mitts because you're going to go in. You're probably going to get less burn and grilling. The other one is down to here. And you can see they're basically the same. Here's where they, I'm going, oh, they're the same thing. But you could get your refill. So I got the you know, refill too because I want to have two of everything. I just haven't gotten around to doing that. I was trying to do everything else. But they are grippy, which is nice. Because sometimes with some of these, even though I like these, sometimes things are slippy. And that way it's going to grip. But once again, you know, they, they have really good directions. They show you how to, you know, they, they go through the whole thing step by step. Um, they do have all the things you need because it is, you do put um, all kinds of stuff in there. And they talk about the silicone exterior and how to sew it up. And they give you, oops. Trying to see my directions <laughs> as we're throwing things at each other. So anyway, but it is nice that they they talk about you know quilting it, you know how you can all the different ways to quilt it. Once again, photographs. It's nice to have photographs. Sometimes it's nice to just have a photograph, and you know how to put it together and and you know they always they do their reality check. Oh, stop! Check to make sure. You don't have something full of, check to make sure you're on the correct side. Check to make sure this and that and the other. So, because this was not, this is called a, around the bobbin. And, you know, whenever I get a new pattern company, you're always going, hmm, hmm, you know, are they going to be good? Are they going to be one of those where I go, hmm, 
but I, I like their directions. They were clear, so that worked out really well. And I like the fact that I could get extra ones, and then I can make them any, any way I want to. So that's the, the one. Let's see. I talked about the colors. And once again, I'm probably making it, you know, the part that you have to sew on, making it just a little bit longer, giving yourself a little bit of wiggle room to make sure you can shove it up in there. Did I make two right ones? No. <laughs> I like the longer one, I but like the longer one. Yeah. Like I, the, the fat one's a little bit wider on, on the cuff. Uh -huh. I have a roommate who doesn't have all of his fingers, and so his hands are a little bit bigger, and so the ones that are more restrictive, it's harder to get his hands in. So uh -huh. it just depends on. But you could just change that pattern a little bit. Right, you know, because. Yeah, the silicone. No, the silicone doesn't go wider, but the actually, well, I guess it is a little bit smaller than the green one. Let's see. Because the green one, yeah, it's, it, it is a little bit, it's not significantly though, if you look at it, it's not significantly smaller. Because the, the one is right here where this one's this way. Um, what I think is what's constricting it more is the band that's down here, but you can make it so it's, I think it comes in a little bit. You, you don't have to make it come in because you can, because this is the taller one, yeah. And just feel that how the silicone is. I'll throw my little packages away. <laughs> but I just thought those were really fun. They're very different and you know what's nice too is you can just make them figure decor once again. And of course, I'm sitting there going, so could I take that off and reuse the silicone? You probably could once, but after that, you know, once you have the holes in there, you're just going to start to perforate it. Maybe I could spend the, like, $10 to get a new one. <laughs> or just buy a bunch of them and just keep making them. So anyway, those are the, the silicone mitts that, that they have. Um, let's see. You know, and that's the thing, too, is nobody says you can't make them longer. You know, because if you like the, sh the one, how wide that is, you could make it longer and wider. Just and just, here, exactly, yeah. you, you could do like that. It's just here. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, where it's just the cup. Yeah, it's, it's just, just the, the cup. It's just down here. Yeah, it's just the cup. So you could you could make it instead of coming in, you could go back out. Because it looks like their cuff. Right. Yeah, because you could make that because you right, if that's okay, you know, and the cuff hangs down below it. Right. So, as long as that one side is the same, you can, yeah. Right, because if the cuff make, if the cuff, you know, so the, the silicone overlay comes to here and then the cuff comes up to here, and if that's the problem, who says you even have to put the cuff on there? Right. Yeah. You know, you could leave it off and you could just bind it right down there. You could just bind it, you know? So start thinking about what, Okay, if I like it this like maybe I want mine longer, but I want it wider. Maybe I need it exactly, you know, like the long gloves. evening gloves, because you've got to reach in and pull it out. Or right, it's too tight. Well, instead of having come in, come out. Silicone coming down to where this cup is. So yeah. this is all the silicone, which is nice. Right. You just had the silicone and put a little binding on it. It really is kind of how that lines up, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because you can see if you have the oh the other one, put them on top of each other. They are exactly the yeah. same, except for the one has the longer part on it. Yeah. So these two, when you look at them, it's this part, and then they just added that on there. And so this one, they're adding a cuff, so it's this long. This one, they're adding a cuff down here. 
but no one says that you can't make this one and instead of adding that cuff on the bottom and you'll just have to cut off your lining to be the same length so you would just use because you can see that this is the insert and then you have your lining and or the, the cuff and then here's your lining piece just use yeah so make four of these you know two for the lining two for the inside and then just bind the bottom just to cover it up and then you just have to do a little bit of a binding and you're done so it's nice that you can <clears throat> change things up a bit and make them so it fits whatever you need them to be if they're too tight too long too whatever you can do that and you know yeah with this one because this is not that significantly smaller than the shorter one buy the long one and cut it right now <laughs> you can make it any length you wanted to so you can see so have those alrighty so those are all of our silicone I'll probably go home now and say I, I sure hope I I'm pretty sure I wrote down what each one of those are so I don't you know what paper are you using is this your pattern um this is just pattern tracing paper okay. um yeah it's um I, I buy it by the bolt, literally. Um, but it is just pattern tracing paper. It's really thick, but you can actually sew on it. It doesn't tear. I, I don't. I'm trying. It's. I don't think it's the sweet. It might actually be the Swedish. I'm trying to remember the um, brand I have. But I, I buy it by the bolt because I do, and I like it. It's. It's really wide. It's probably about 90 wide on the bolt, so I remember I can fold it, unfold it. But because I do do clothing, I need a lot of this stuff. So I do have that. I, we just have some paper back there that you know you can use. Here's the paper covers. Oh, okay. So I have all of these different different things, keeping them kind of sort of in order. So the, those are the, the oven mitt and the everyday mitt. And all they are is one's just a little bit shorter than the other. I know I had to buy both of them because I'm going, what's the difference? And when I got them, I'm like, oh, okay, now I see. One's just a little longer than the other. But they're still fun that you can, you know, make them whatever color you want. I, do, I did think it was interesting, though, that they only have these in colors. But the big one, they don't. It's like it's the same. It's the same thing. Just I, I don't know. Could you sew one? I would assume you could, because they do get gross and dirty. I'm hoping that they won't get too dirty on the inside, and then you could just wipe down the outside. But I do like how it has the grippies. Mm -hmm. That's what I I really like because I. Some of these, you know, you're trying to hold on to them and they're just slipping out of your hands. And this seems to be a little bit deeper, you know, it, the thumb area. So you can you can really put it up against your hot whatever it is that you're pulling out of the oven and use those. So we have those. So because we may need more stuff, that's the mitt. Oh, no, it's, okay, then we have the trivets. Okay, so this comes in. This is the this is our the extra large. Yeah, this is the large. It comes in large, medium, and small. I'm pretty sure. Uh, where's the? <clears throat> let's see, the refills, the trivet. And so they have extra large. Lar so they do have an extra large. So I bought the large size. I wonder what the extra large is. So. Um, yeah, so it has the extra large trivet, the large trivet refill, small. So they just have the three sizes. So this is the large. That surprises me that I didn't get the extra large because <laughs> I usually get everything extra large. But this is the, um, unless I wrote that down wrong, but I'm usually pretty good about not messing with that. So it just comes like this. And I actually thought that, it was just going to slip right in, but it doesn't. You actually sew it in, so it doesn't come out. And this one I did, so this one does have a pocket on it, so you could use it like that, or you can make it without the pocket. And once again, what I did with this is I actually quilted it in the hoop. So I did it a little bit, I had to put mine together a little bit differently 
than the way they did it. Because, of course, I always have to make life interesting, right? Because the way, once again, they have really good directions. They have two different ways to do it. They have one way, which is the way I did it, that has a pocket in it, and you sew it together and you turn it inside out. They have another way where you put it together and then you bind it like you would a mini quilt. I'm thinking that that way might be a little bit easier. I'm not sure. It gets kind of tricky in the corners there, but... Um, and this one too, it's thicker here, probably because of how I did it, versus here. So I made this go up a little bit higher so it wouldn't be right in the middle and be all, you know, go do a step down. But what they, and she does have good directions on how to do it. And once again, you're sewing through this silicone, but it's not hard to sew through. I was really surprised. I was waiting for shredding and, no, it just, just sewed through just, not a problem. So they do have, you know, the different, they show you option one, option two. They tell you how to cut it. I have mine, I cut mine a little bit bigger for the back pocket because I was quilting it. And the way they have you do your quilting is they have you catch a big piece of fabric out. Then they have you put the batting on the inside, fold it, and then quilt it. You know, so of course, since I'm doing it in the hoop, I can't really do that. So what I did is I quilted the whole thing and then folded it over. So they have you fold it, and they also have you put a piece of binding on the top. But since it's folded, I don't know why you really need to, except that maybe to cover up all your stitches, you know, because you're, you're ending right there on the edge. Mine, because I did it in the hoop, I just folded mine in half. So mine's thicker. And I folded it in half and then just stitched it down. Did I put a, no, I, I was going to say, I don't, no, I didn't put a binding on there. I just stitched it so it looks kind of like it was bound, but I just stitched it flat and then put it down there like that. So you could do it either way and follow their direction. You can follow their directions or make up your own like I do, you know, just making things up as I go along. I didn't put the little hang things on there because I never hang mine. Mine are always flat, so I didn't even bother with that. But um, this, this way you, you, has two backings so of course they're all quilted and I quilted them all in the hoop so you turn it and you turn it again and so then um, when you do your first turning this is the opening so then I just did a three-step zigzag to cover it up and then you just turn that inside out and then you have that or you can just do it all together with your backing your trivet you know you put these around the four sides and then you do that, and then you'll just bind it like you would a little mini quilt. Whether you want to go around it or you want to do here, 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 and here, that's up to you. So if, you know how, if you're a quilter and you know how to do the binding, then you just bind it like that. They do give you directions on how to bind it. If you want to do the binding way, you can do that. So you can do both ways. Do they give you the dimensions of the different sizes? Um, I'm trying to remember where, because I guess I didn't put it on there. I was trying to see if they had, I would have to look it up. I, for some reason, I thought they had on here the different sizes. Because I don't, I'd have to look that up. Because it doesn't say what sizes they are, do they? But this is the large option. So, yeah, because it's an 8-inch overlay included. It uh, turns out to be about 9.5 if you bind it this one I, i'm trying to yeah the silicone just goes right to there because you sew right along the edge once again use your zipper foot because you have these little flowers that are sticking up and so you can't just put your foot on there that's one thing i did learn it's like oh that's not working you know so i use my zipper foot on that but this that's is about an eight inch yeah so this is eight inch yeah and this is the large so i'd have to look that up that's a good thing to look up did you get the circle fabric here, or is it in your stash? I did buy it here a couple years ago. No so probably is not. Um, yeah, you'd have to look for it, but yes. So yes, it is in my stash. Okay. Because I like lime green, pink, and purple, obviously. So I do a lot of that. I know, and now I'm running out of it. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> I'm running out because I was going to put on this one as the cuff, and yeah. So I was doing all of that. So thank you, Becky. I will have to look that up. And I can do that. 
can see what the sizes are of those other ones. I know, it's like I, I just went there. I was just like extra large, large. I should have said a certain size for them. So we do that. Um, you know, towels. Um, you know, I know that if you want any towels, I can get lots of different. We have some out front. We have some blue, you know, some pretty turquoise blue, some pink, and, and kind of a burgundy. And there's all different types of towels. If you guys ever want any just cotton towels, just let me know. You can look on um, like checker distributors or brewer sewing and you can see what they have. If you want one, you can always just email me and say, hey, Gail, could you order me these towels? Usually they come in packages of six, though, just so you know. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have a lot of them. But this is, I was just showing you, this is a towel that I've used for a long time. And it still holds up pretty well, even though it's a little wrinkly. Um, you know, everything kind of, it's, it's a kitchen towel, right? You use them. This is one that has not been laundered. But you can take a lot of our towels and you can embroider on them. I know Mindy does a bunch of them. You know, she did it for Christmas once, and that's where I'm going, I need to do these cute things too. I haven't done the chickens yet. I have chickens, but I haven't done them yet. But just to make some really fun gifts. Really cute. You know, if you know the color scheme, you can get the towels, and then you can just do that. So we have all of that. The other thing too is maybe you don't want to make a quilt. I mean a quilt, an apron. You can, we do have some, this, there's some aprons out there. This one, the red one, and then they have a black one. Just let me know if you need them. They do come in packages of three. So, but these are kind of fun. They've got big grommets on them. And so you just, you know, loop it through and then tie it. So these also, I did this for Christmas gifts where I put, you know, I, I would embroider people's names or, or anything on there, like sous chef or something like that on there for gifts. So I, there's also aprons. Or you can make your own aprons. Because some of us some of us actually do that sort of thing. We make our own aprons. But do I have hecklers in the back? I know. She'll kill me. What, what, what are you? OK. I have a friend. Her first name is Amelia. Oh, OK. So I was going to embroider a big white A and say it's a scarlet letter. <laughs> there you go. That's right. Some of us that remember that, the scarlet letter. Okay. Oh, you know what? And I forgot to turn this on. I was doing so many other things. Let's see. Because I was going to, because after I did all this, I went, oh, I didn't do anything on the serger. But I do have the leggings class this afternoon. I said, oh, I will show them a technique. I'm going to show them this afternoon. So we're going to turn you on. Hopefully you will turn on. Supposedly this camera now is on battery. We'll see if it works. This is, must be the other HDMI. Do, 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 do. Let's see if this is, that's a good sign, I think. It's even better. Get a chair. I, I, I saw Raymond, I should grab one of those cute new chairs that we have. I think I might pull this over a bit. Without the big machine here, I had so much room. Thank you. I know. Cables, wires, everywhere. Always, always. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I want to turn the camera around so we can see this. And I'm going to zoom in. Get it. I might make this a little bit lower. I'm thinking I need it on my the other side of me. I want you to see how I can. I'm going to do a. Um, actually, not going to do it flat lock. I'm going to do it using a blanket stitch. 
Now the flat lock, because I'm doing a, um, a leggings class this afternoon, there's different ways to put on elastic, but sometimes people want to put it on completely on their serger. And they don't have a cover stitch machine. So this is one where I, I actually did a flat lock on, on the serger. So what I did is first I sewed, I just sewed the elastic down and then folded it over. Then you have to fold it like this again so you have it folded, folded, folded. And you're going to do the flat lock right along the edge of that elastic and fold it over. So you have to make sure you fold it nice and tight. This chair is really, it's one of these that it sits down, but then it has wheels, but it doesn't roll very well. Kind of drives me crazy. Um, and so looking at this, if you can see, you can see how I did a flat lock on it. And we'll just pretend that I have the elastic in there if that makes any sense. But see, this makes it look, you know, they have those double cover stitch machines, those industrial ones that that have the stitching. It looks the same both top and bottom, so it looks like our cover stitch on both sides. I've looked into those, and I, I, don't, I really don't need an industrial machine, let's put it that way. But it's really weird because they sit up really big, but you sit here and you feed it's like you, you sew from the side. It's very bizarre. But of course, I sit there and it has a vacuum cleaner. It sucks up all the mess and everything. I'm going, oh, a sewing machine that cleans up after itself. Oh, wow, this is so great. But anyway, so I'm just going to show you if you look at that, you can see how I just did the cover stitch on there, on the elastic. But what I found is, one, is I use the lace foot so I don't cut anything. That's always a good thing when you don't want to cut that fold with your elastic on it because it's, you're sewing on it like this, so you don't want to do that. The other thing I found is that it works. And you're going to have your lower looper like normal. And let's see, can you see? And if you can see in here, I'm going to look in here a little bit more. I'm going to bring my... oh. I'm going to bring my looper up. You can see my upper looper here. And depending on the type of machine you have, you have your little subsidiary looper that you stick on there. Some machines you may have to put it on. Some machines you flip up and in. It depends. Because remember, your machine needs to have that looper or it will not create a loop. So I'm going to thread my lower looper like normal. And it goes in better if it's your thread's not tangled around the threading lever. Look at that. It comes right out when you have it done correctly. And then my other one, my needle thread. And you don't. And I have, I'm going to do a wide, so I'm going to have it coming. Now, the way they have you do a flat lock is they have you put the flat lock in here, okay? And then they have you Where? through through your upper looper, okay? Oh, you can't see it there. Through the upper looper little slot, and then they have it come right over and thread like normal. So actually, I'm going to pull it out a bit. And yeah, let's, can I, probably can't get it up now. Who tightened this thing? Okay, don't look up there if you're going to get dizzy because I'm going to be. There we go. Okay. Now we can see everybody. Alrighty. So, the way they normally have you do flat lock is you do your lower looper like normal. And then your upper looper, you're going to take it through, I mean, your needle, you're going to take it through your upper looper, come over, up, and around. And they're just doing that for tension purposes. Um, because these are the machines that you can select your stitch be A, B, C, D. If you have a machine 
that you can do your own tensions, then just thread it like normal and you'll just loosen your tension to that needle. Okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it more like the blanket stitch because I want it even looser because I need it as loose as possible to stay as flat as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down through that upper looper. Then I'm going to stick it in my upper looper threader, but I am going to, when I open it up, now I'm going to have to go back down again so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to, you have a bar here, you have a bar here, and then it goes into your, your tubes. So I take it, there's a bar, the second bar, and I'm going to bring it up. That's why they had this weird little hooky thing there. You didn't know that. And I'm going to bring it, and then I'm just going to thread it. I have it in the O1 position, which means it's in the left position. And I'm just going to thread it. I'm going to put it on A because I want a wide. So it comes up here. This is also why, did you ever wonder why they had that big opening here? Guess what? It's for that. Okay. So it should all be set up just fine. I do have my, can we see it? We can see it. I have this set up and you can see the knife blade is here, but this is farther away. I want those stitches to fall off the edge of the fabric. That way it's going to make it loose enough where it's going to be flat. If you have it right on the edge of the fabric, it's not going to be flat enough. And I also like to, and because of this, you can have your, blade, your knife blade up or down. It doesn't matter because I'm not going to get anywhere near that knife blade because I'm using my, my lace foot as my guide. And I should probably set it up not my machine and I'm just feeding it into here and usually you don't sew from the side like this and if you see that do you see how those threads are just hanging off the edge can you see that it's hanging off the edge all those threads are hanging off the edge now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it, and it pulls flat. And now it looks kind of sort of like a store-bought. But one side, the inside, you're just going to have little ticks. Just, but on the outside, you're going to have that nice flat look. So that's how you do it. You'll just, you just have elastic in there. So you'd fold it. You know, I'd have my elastic. I'd fold it. I'd fold it. Sew along that edge and then you have your elastic in there. And you can see I have elastic in there. So this is one way to do it, OK? Using the blanket stitch instead, because it gives me more, bringing that thread all the way down through the looper, you know, through the looper tube, and then back up, gives me, loosens that tension more. Now, another thing you can do is if you do have a combo machine, if you have a you know, an accolade, an evolution, an ovation, or the triumph, you can actually, because I've done this before too, I actually put my needle thread through my tension on my, on my chain looper, okay? Because this way I have full control over how much tension is there. So I put it down through here, and let's, oh, I, you can see it. So I will bring it, you know, down through my tension disc, and then I will bring it straight over, up and over, and put it into my needle. And this way, I have full control over my tension. And I can play around with it going, I need it looser, 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 looser. And I can do it however I want to. But the blanket stitch also works. OK? So those are the two things you can do. If you're doing leggings and you just want it to lie flat, you can do it on a skirt or whatever. OK? So any questions about that? Any questions? When you did that, that's, is that catching the elastic or no? Yes, it is. 
it is it's just barely so when i put my elastic in the first thing i do is i just sew my elastic like normal i sew it right on the edge so i i so you can see there's another serge line on there using a three thread i just sew it on there and then if you look at that you can see the elastic on the inside so the elastic is sewn onto the edge of the fabric and then you fold it you know so then i'll fold it over so i know where i need it to be but now I have to fold it over one more time and to do that, that flat lock or the blanket stitch. And so then I have it, and I do. I really feel it. I feel to make sure I, and since this is also stretched, I will pin it. I will use pins. I usually don't use pins, but I use pins here because I don't want the fabric to get twisted. You know, so I'll sit there and make sure that it's not twisted. I'll pull it. I put my my pins over to the side so I can leave them in if I need to. So I pin this way. I pin straight parallel with that line and I just pull it up and making sure so then when I pull it to get the, you know, the stretch out of it because it has to be smaller, I can do that. But I do. I have pins probably every few inches on here to make sure that it's going to stay right along that edge because I don't want it to go all bubbly on you. So I do, I use, you know, you can feel it as I'm pulling it and pulling it and making sure that, I, and then I pin it and then I go to the next one and I pull it and pull it and roll it and pin it and do that. And then after you've sewn it, then I pull it and making sure that, and I only sew to right there, so making sure that I catch both places. Because some of us, you know, it's like if we have a serger, we want to do it all serger. We don't want to get out a sewing machine too, heavens, you know. We want to do it all that way. But this way it does look more like the other, and it has a lot of stretch to it too. Because sometimes those, the cover stitches have ease and give. But, you know, the serger stitches are the ones that really stretch. So we have that. Okay, so any questions about anything? And I do have some of the... Some of the items that I have, I have up there already, so you don't even have to order them. You can just grab them. And then others, you know, you may have to order. These I don't have extras of, so you'd have to order those. So go ahead and do that. Would you like me to look up the sizes of those trivets? I'll pull out my computer real quick and look up that and put those on there. That is definitely an oversight. And I can check those out. Do we have any show and tell today? And I'm going to write those down on my list. I just made this little little guy. Oh, that's lovely. Just, I don't know if I'm going to use it as a wall hanging or oh, just set it, in the middle, or set it in the middle of my table. Right, it would be great either way. Somewhere. So. That is really lovely. Just sewing, still sewing on the binding. But, <laughs> but it was fun. <laughs> that, that's what it's all about, right? Yeah. Just, was, was that a quilt as you go or did you piece it and then? Uh, no, it's pieced. It's yeah, pieced. It's pieced. And it was a new one. It was a, a different way to do the half square triangles when they're in the corner. Oh, okay. That, so that was fun. And it's um, uh, by Lori Holt. Uh huh. She has a tutorial online on how to do it. Mm hmm. So, and I just happened to have some of the same fabric that she had. So I went ahead and I used it. So, so it was fun. And my eight-year-old to cross stitch. Oh, that is so cute! <laughs> I love that. So my little eight-year-old do a little pepperoni slices, cross stitching people. Hey, <laughs> yeah, we were having a crochet club this this summer, and so teaching all these. It's interesting trying to teach these little girls to crochet and little boys. So we had some little boys and little girls trying to crochet because I'm sitting there going, "You just why is it?" Oh, you know, because you're trying to get them to hold it right. Trying to teach to knit was really interesting. So let's see. The extra large. 
a not it's nine by eleven. Oh, nine by twelve. Excuse me, nine by twelve. Let's see how it's done. It includes one nine by twelve silicone overlay. So it turns out to be about eleven by fourteen finished. Okay. Now I need to go and do, so the large one is, so that's interesting because that one is a, the large, this table is bumpy. Trivet sizes. Okay, the large is 8 by 8. So the finished is around nine and a half and nine and a half. Okay. Next, let's see if I can find large, extra large, small. I think those are the only sizes, right? Extra large, large, and small. I kept looking for the medium. I remember I was looking for the medium going, why don't they have a medium here? Um, Six and a half. Six and a half. So the finished, let me see, is about eight inches. Okay, so this is small. So those are the three sizes. Those are for the trivets. Oh, the, okay, the trivets. The, yes, the trivets, because I didn't I didn't write them down. So the these guys are all one size. There's there's no other sizes. So the extra large trivet is 9 by 12. So it finishes about 11 by 14 because it's a little bit bigger when you put the binding on. The large is the 8 by 8, which is the one I have. And the small is 6 and a half by 6 and a half. That's what the, the actual trivet size is. Does um, the bolt cozies there, does, does that come in different, the software, is it in different sizes? Yes. These guys, they come in. The extra small is about five by five. Um, the small, <coughs> excuse me, is about six by six. The medium is about eight by eight. The large is nine and a half by nine and a half. And then the extra large is about 10.4 by 10.4. But they're all on that? Yes, they're all on there. Okay, great. So these guys, they, they come in all the different formats. They know that you have to get all the different formats and they have all the different sizes all in here. So you just figure out what you want. And like I said, it comes out looking like a weird kind of cross. And then you just, you can kind of see how they, how it is so if you flattened it out. And then doing it the correct way, putting the quilted side on the inside, and then you just fold it up. And then you just either hand tack or you can sew around the outside edge. She has you, because you have to close up the hole that you turned it, she said, oh, just sew around the whole thing then. Just hold this up. I was debating about putting snaps on there because I think that those cam snaps might work. You know, I'm putting different snaps on so I can make it smaller or larger. I was debating about that. No metal snaps. Don't do metal snaps. I don't know. I'll, I'm not a big Velcro fan, you know, most of the time, but I was thinking about that. So I have big bowls. So I made mine for our big, our big bowls. So they do come in all the different sizes. And I think I may have one of those over there already. But yeah. Anything else I need to look up? So now, okay, now I know the trivet sizes. And of course, you know, if you need to know, if you want any of the fold over elastic, I can tell you all the, I have a list of all the colors. They're all the, you know, the same ones we had before. You know, they go along with the mesh and everything. And, uh, of course, all of this, like I said, I think most of us have the mesh. I think all of us have ordered the mesh. We all have all kinds of mesh. Just, where can I use it up? Use up the mesh. Did you use the liquid vinyl before you sewed? Yes, I did. So I just cut out a big piece of fabric, and then I just put it on there, and I had it on, you know, I left it on here. And I just painted it on using my foam. 
And actually, it washed out really well, because this is the one I use. Because most of the time, you're like, yeah, I have to toss them all. So I just went and I, I painted it on really thick. I should have put it on thicker. You know, after I did it, I, I should have done it again. That's what I was thinking. What I should do is do the one side, wait about 12 hours at least, maybe 24, flip it over, do the other side, let it sit, and then cut it out. And that way, it just it would be hard to do it after you've already sewn it up. So I just did it beforehand, and then I just cut it. And you can press it um, just with a press cloth over it. So you can still press it. which one of those did you use? Um, this was the actually the, the eau de coat. But this should be, the heat and bond should be exactly the same. And this one, this one doesn't say that it's, I, I think it, it's made in France. Um, this one, act, you know, make sure it says on there, this is non-toxic. You know, it doesn't cause cancer in California, right? Everything is, causes cancer in California. <laughs> but it, it is, um, but it does make it. So it says one coat is water and stain resistant. Two coats is waterproof and stain resistant. Three coats is waterproof and stain resistant with a semi-gloss oil cloth finish. So depending on what you want it to be, just keep putting more and more coats on there. But I do like, you know, I do like the Heat and Bond brand. I, I use a lot of their stuff. I, I like their stuff. So when I saw this, I said, oh, we'll try this one. But it does give you, these are, they're basically the same though. Oil cloth effect, waterproof, stain resistant. But this is the one that, um, and then we, I think we may even have one out there. Okay. I had a, I forgot to grab that. Um, yeah, we had a little interesting thing with Brewer. They were updating their system. And so I would put things in the shopping cart, and then they would disappear. So I'd put it in again, and it'd disappear. <clears throat> so then I'd get the whole cart filled, and then half of it would disappear. So I'd have to refill it again. So then I filled up the cart. I put in an order, but then it emptied the cart before the order, you know, before I said, oh, order it. Yeah. So I went, I said, okay, what did I order? So I tried to fill it up again. So I filled it up again, ordered it again, and then guess what? All those orders went through even though it didn't see. So all of a sudden, we were getting a lot of stuff. And, you know, Raymond's looking at me going, Gail, why did you order 30 press cloths? Wow. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be that many. So it was one of those things you're going, okay, <laughs> there we go. I love it. You know, so it was pretty funny. So we have, that's why we have, a, you know, extras of a lot of things. Like, oh, buy them. But, I, yeah, I was just going, oh, I don't believe it. Because they didn't send me an email. They didn't send me anything. They didn't send me. And then all of a sudden, the boxes started to arrive. You're just going, oh, you're kidding me. So I think their system is now all transferred over. Because I'm going, I'm not ordering from you guys if you're going to play this game on me. But anyway, but those are just some of the fun things we have. Remember that, you know, I'll always do special orders for you guys. We did get in some different um, uh, Creative Grids rulers because I know a lot of people love the Creative Grids rulers. So I got in some different sizes for you to use those. We got in some more spray bottles because we're running low on those. And I'm always trying to find new products and new fun things to do. So next month, just so you know, next month. Because I know somebody's going to want to be here. And you may need to bring your stuff for me. It's, I'm going to do all Halloween. It's going to be nothing but Halloween stuff. And I went and I found some really cute designs that I've digitized. but So I can't sell them to you. But I'm just going to show you I digitized to use with Mylar. And I was going to sew them with Mylar and Glow in the Dark Thread. Because they're bones. It's called Bone Buddies. So I have some fun things coming up. Of course, Broomhilda's Bakery. I don't know if I'm going to, I don't think I'll get the quilt done, but I'll bring it in. And. The new one that's just coming out? No, the one that you got. Yeah, the other one has not come out yet. I'm still waiting on that one. We did put in some pre orders for some things, but just, yeah, I'm just going to be using all kinds of fun fabrics and some really cute designs, sewing, embroidery. Once again, you know, doing all the different things, but it should be really fun because I, I love Halloween stuff. I love Halloween stuff. So, uh, of course, also some um, steampunk pumpkins and fun things like that. So little bags, little, all kinds of fun stuff. So I'm excited. So I have my pile of Halloween stuff. It's piling up. 
But we got to do it in September because we got to get ready for October. I can't do it in October. It's too late. So I feel like I'm behind for my Christmas showing already. No, I know I am. I'm, I'm already behind. I'm going, who who would like I'm this as a present? Maybe we'll give a, yes, everything now. one of those. Maybe. Exactly. Well, that's what I keep thinking about is like, what am I going to do? You know, what can I give as gifts? You can give them one of these and one of these. Look, there you go. And maybe, maybe a coaster that I could do. Something to go with. Yeah, you know, just trying to do something fun. That's why some of these, like this was so fast. All of a sudden it was done. I'm going, it's done? It's done already? Oh, okay, that's good. But um, just fun, cute little things. Just thinking of we're getting ready for Christmas or Christmas in two years, depending on how slow we are. So we'll do that. I'm liking them too. Because, I think, you know, on a hot, especially, especially if you're out, Grilling in a, in a smoker, like I have to reach in and pull by the smoker. Uh huh. It gets hard, and it gets messy sometimes. Mm hmm. So. Like yeah, because it's it's just keeping everything off. Because I know that, like some of these things, you know, I know I have a lot of batting in here, but it's still sometimes the heat goes through. Yeah. Even store bought ones, yeah. you know, like going, wow, this is really hot. Yes. Right. You grab it and you can yeah. feel it. Right. I don't know why. It's hard for me to use a mitt because when I use it, I don't know why. But I always still get burnt, right? Right. So I'm hoping that with this, with the silicone, and then you have, this is batting in there. So now I have batting, and I have the silicone. So hopefully that will keep us from getting getting burned. You know, and I like the grippy part, too. That's why when I saw these, I went, oh, they're silicone, they're grippy. Then, because I can't, when you're trying to hold on to something, I'm like, oh, quick, 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 because it's slipping out of my hand. Now I can just do this. So I'm thinking that those guys may all kind of yep. go away, and I'm going to slowly. That's why I bought extras already. I know. I really like that. That's why, you know, I did one like this and then this. And this is cute, too, if it matches your kitchen. You know, it's going to. But the transparent ones are really nice because now you can see the cute fabrics you're going to use. So you can start to do and make everything, if you have enough fabric, you can do, I can do the bowl with this, with this, and do all kinds of things with the same fabric and be very coordinated, or at least use the same colors. You know, like this one, I was making sure that it could go along with, and this one too, they all kind of go together. And um, that way you can go and coordinate stuff. You don't have to have the exact same fabric. But it's fun. It's fun to just to go and do some things. You could even make your mixer with the same fabric, right? And then have just be color coordinated everywhere. So anyway, but thank you guys. Well, it's just, you know, it's getting so quiet, you know, not a whole lot of people. That's what I'm going, are people just tired of it? Yeah, so I do have, oh, and I was going to show you some of these things here, too, because, you know, we order things for people, and then they change their minds. Um, we do have, this is a seam ripper that fits on your finger, you know, so you can do that. Right. Then, of course, people are always talking about my cool tweezers, so I got another set in that I really, I love these tweezers. These are really nice tweezers. And then these are handles. They're not leather. They're leather-like, but they clip on, and so you can just clip them on your purse. So we have some of these fun things in, as well as some of our, I do have the, the trivets, the coasters, the handle huggers, the bowls, and the in the mix. So I have all of those that you can just grab right here. You don't have to order them. But I do love my little, I like how sharp they are. It's just little things in life that make us happy. <laughs> Right. Do we all have a question? Now, excuse me. Now, do you have, I've got to have this. Now, you say these come in a package of threes. Is this yours or? 
that is mine. If you would like to purchase, I should I should have turned this off. I don't know how much they are. I'll have to look and I can look and see. If you would like to purchase that, that's fine because I have another one at home. Okay. I purchased one of you was mentioning three.